Hello everybody. Um, I think we will we'll make a gradual gradual start with everything. So as usual, if someone could just confirm um, that everything is okay from your side of things, just put a message in the chat so I know it's all working. So this is our our weekly recap and market outlook for next week. We do this every Friday usually at two thirty UK time, and it's a, a catch up with what's been going on with markets and a look ahead to the major stuff to watch for next week. We have had a bit of volatility, I think, as a few people picked up on. So we'll have a look at that. Interesting time um, for stock markets, so we'll take a look at that. Let's just do the risk warning quickly. It's important to remember this presentation is only for educational purposes. It does not contain and should not be construed as containing investment advice or an investment recommendation or an offer of or solicitation for a transaction in any financial instrument. David Jones and Capital.com accept no responsibility for any use that may be made of these comments and for any consequences that results. Spread bets and see if these are complex instruments and come with a high risk of losing money rapidly due to leverage. 76.25% of retail investor accounts lose money when spread betting and or trading CFDs with this provider. You should consider whether you understand how spread bets and CFDs work and whether you can afford to take the high risk of losing your money. So as usual, the format for today, we'll have a look at our usual markets. Um, we'll go through stock indices, some FX, crypto, oil, gold, silver. Then I'll go into the questions and um, pick up on any markets that you want looking at. Before we do that, let's just look at the major stuff for next week. Um, Australian interest rate on Tuesday, early hours of Tuesday morning for me anyway. Uh, 6th of October, New Zealand interest rate. And then the big one for next week is the non-farm payrolls, uh, US unemployment numbers normally released on the first Friday of the month, which is today, for those of you who are paying attention, um, but uh, can sometimes get pushed back a week. So that's why we have uh, next Friday the 8th is the US non-farm payrolls. Um, so that's it. Let's jump into the markets. It has been, it's been a volatile time. Let's just talk a bit about what's causing this volatility. We'll start off with um, stock markets. Um, but we had, we did a video earlier this week on the Evergrande situation, the Chinese property giant that has been sending shockwaves through markets a little bit with some saying, is this uh, a bit like the financial crisis that it starts with one company, but it spreads out. Did a video on that. So there's been a bit of nerves about, about Evergrande. Um, the S&P has just had its worst month since March 2020. So since the, the uh, coronavirus pandemic, when it really fell off a cliff 18 months ago. So its worst performance, you can see it here in September, came into September around 4,500, ended yesterday just above 4,300. So the worst month for a while for the S&P 500. Inflation is sort of spooking markets as well, of course. I think the prospect of higher inflation the possibility of the central bank withdrawing uh, some of its support for markets, all of that. So a few things coming together. So let's kick things off with stock markets. Um, I think, you know, this correction or whatever we want to call it that we're going through for the S&P, if we just look at the last 12 months, this is, you know, quite a bit deeper than what we've been used to. So you know, perhaps getting a little bit twitchy um, stock markets at the moment. You know, the market pushed up to fresh all-time highs in early September at 45.50. We're currently trading around 4,300. So the market's off 250 points. What's that? About 6%, something like that, uh, off those September highs. And it is a deeper sell-off than some of the ones, you know, we've had in recent months. You can see them here. So I'm getting a little bit twitchy, I must admit, about the um, uh, US stock market. You know, if, we, if we'd have sold off like we did here in September, then bounced out to all-time highs again, it's like it's been going over the last 12 months. So I, I do wonder, you know, are we seeing ongoing nerves in stock markets? So that is something that I'm aware of, uh, or I'm aware of at the moment. I think I did say a week ago, I trimmed back some of my US S&P ETFs that I had um, a couple of weeks ago. I think I did that, just took a little bit of risk back. And, and so far, I've still got uh, a fair bit, you know, percentage-wise in it. So I still follow it pretty closely. But um, yeah, you know, we've fallen out of that trend line in the S&P. 
We've broken as well below that that August low, that August low at 43.50. But I look below that. Uh, so I think it's going to be interesting, interesting um, couple of weeks ahead for the S&P. I suppose an aggressive trade here. It's probably not one I would do today, but maybe one for next week. If you think that perhaps markets are overreacting to what's going on in the world, um, it's to be a buyer. And the level I would watch for a stop loss would be the July 19 lows, about 42.30. Also backing up the fact that perhaps things are getting a bit overdone um, is the RSI. Let's just zoom things in a bit. Um, so whenever we will always look at RSIs in the various videos we do throughout the week. Um, but we've, we've got this market just today, actually, or overnight has pushed a bit lower, um, lower than that previous low in September. <clears throat> But we've got higher lows on the RSI. So this is, is um, what's known as bullish divergence. So it's the suggestion that perhaps the weakness has gone too far. So it's interesting. It's an interesting setup for next week. So for me, the next big level to watch is 42.30. Is it, did I say 40? Yeah, 42.30, the July lows. You know, and I think if we break below there, it does build the case that, that that's it. The trend is over. The uptrend since um, whenever it was, well, March 2020. Uh, is over. And we're looking at perhaps at best the sideways market, perhaps further market weakness. So um, definitely for me, one of the hot markets to watch over over the next couple of weeks, the S&P 500. Let's see what's going on, see what happens. Uh, NASDAQ, if you have a look at that, the NASDAQ 100, we'll take a look at that. So again, the NASDAQ has come off from again, September all time highs at, uh, what were the highs? 15,700, the market's 14,700 as we speak. So the market's down 1,000 points, so about 6%, 7% off those um, all-time highs. Um, breaking below the August low, big level on the NASDAQ is July lows, 14,450. So again, let's see what happens. But there's that, there's that trend off the March lows. Um, you know, we have had quite a, a couple of quite deep sell-offs on the NASDAQ so far this year. Um, so it's not as out of the ordinary, the move we've seen in the NASDAQ over the last month, um, like the S&P move is, but another one I think, uh, sort of bounce or bust time really for these markets over the next couple of weeks. So that's that. So, you know, we have not been saying that for a while. You know, I mean, every week it's been, oh, the trend is up, buying the dips, you know, but, but things have changed uh, at least in the short term for those US indices. So if we have a look at the DAX, there's our DAX, um, DAX 40 now, of course. Uh, so for the DAX, again, we've, we've dropped back about 800 points off the all-time highs. Big levels for the DAX, just below where we are now, 14,800. These are actually the May lows. Uh, so if we start breaking below there, you know, the market's on five-month lows for the DAX, 14,800, 400 points below where we are now. So again, for these stocks, the question is, uh, has the sell-off been overdone and are we going to see something of a, a snap back up over the next couple of weeks? So um, some interesting ones to watch there as well. FTSE, same thing again. FTSE 100. Fairly scrappy over the last four months, five months or so. I mean, the FTSE is still well above. I mean, as usual, the FTSE is sort of doing its own thing. Well above 6,800, which is the big level there. But clearly, if we see... US stock sell off, that's going to drag the FTSE lower. And the Nikkei, uh, I actually closed out my Nikkei trade, my own Nikkei trade this week. I said I'd been in it forever. And we'd had that breakout on the Nikkei. Uh, and I wondered, oh, are we going to see the Nikkei start to push higher? Is it a false breakout so far? I mean, it only, I think I remember saying over the last couple of weeks, if you wanted to go short, uh, now is the right time to go short. It was a great risk reward. And we've seen the Nikkei following that break just pull back into the middle of the range. So um, let's see, let's see what happens. But a, a bit of a different picture for stock markets in the last couple of weeks to what we have been used to over the last year or so. So let's see, you know, so do, do they bounce back or do they continue to push push lower? Let's see what happens. Right, so that's it. Stock markets looking perhaps, you know, continued, continued vulnerability is perhaps the thing to say for stocks. Uh, gold, so we look at gold and silver. Now gold, of course, in times of trouble, in times of inflation, we'd expect gold to do well. I think I did a gold video earlier this week on the channel. 
And I, I did put an order in to buy at 17.20. So I recorded at the beginning of the week. Uh, and I don't think, well, it hasn't been filled. The market got as low as 17.22. So my order hasn't been filled in that. But I wonder if we see, see gold push a bit higher for me. I mean, it is pretty boring. Don't get me wrong. If we go back over the last 12 months, you know, the trend has been slightly down to sideways for gold. Lots of support from that flash crash low at 1660. And then back here, 1675, March, April. If we saw market stock markets under some more pressure from here, then um, we could see gold a bit more attractive. Um, but let's see what happens. But I've got my order sitting at 1720 for gold. I'm quite happy to leave it there uh, for now and see what happens. But nothing's really changed for gold. It's still pretty boring, to be honest. But we're at the lower end of the range for the last six months. So, um, you know, it's potentially interesting from, from a trading the range point of view, but still no real trend. Uh, silver, I thought silver yesterday, did it break very briefly out of the range yesterday? Again, silver is, is another one of my candidates for most boring market of the last 12 months. But yesterday, look at it, it's just having a little tickle below those lows that have been in place, well, for a year now. So 2165 was the low in September last year. Uh, 2187 in November. Flash crash low, 21.77. So let's, let's call it 21.50. Massive level for silver. And just a couple of days ago, pushed down to 21.41. So again, it's one of those things. What do you want to do? If you think, if you want to play the range, arguably, you know, it, it, it is a buy, has been a buy down here. For me, that trend is still down from June. I think if silver turns next week and took out 21.40, you know, it looks like the risk is for further weakness on silver. And again, you could say if you've got concerns about inflation, concerns about stock markets, silver and gold should do better. But the problem is if we've got a rising US dollar where people see that as a safe haven, that would put pressure on silver, uh, silver and gold. So let's see. Let's see what happens. But silver really threatening the bottom of that range. So it is bounce or bust time for silver. So let's see. Let's see what happens. So that's gold and silver. Um, if we take a look at uh, the pound, pound hit its worst levels. And again, it's all a bit, it is a bit of fear, I think, you know, ratcheting up in the markets. So the pound traded, pound against the dollar this week, traded down to 134.11, which was a new low for the year. Okay, it's, it's been a pretty sideways year for this one. Um, but, you know, you can see we've gone from 139 in the middle of September to 134, a 500 point move. Uh, a bit directionless, I suppose, an aggressive trade, you could take the view, the sell-off's been overdone, but if we did see, I think, uh, more fear in stock markets, you'd expect the US dollar to, to do well and put pressure, uh, more pressure on the likes of pound and uh, gold and silver. Let's see, let's see what happens. But, um, you know, I think, Definitely the, the twitchiness level of markets has increased over the last week. Um, so, you know, I'm not seeing personally a lot to trade at the moment. I do have, I'm trying to think what I did trade. We'll have a look at cotton actually. I did a trade on cotton. I've had a longer term trade ring on cotton. I did a trade on the New Zealand dollar. Um, but in these other markets, some of the stuff we're looking at today, I'm a little bit still waiting and see. Let's take a look at Euro US dollar, Euro USD. Uh, here we go. Say, you know, same sort of thing. Pushed down to its worst levels since a year ago, even less than a year ago, actually. We went back to levels not seen since last summer for um, the euro against the dollar. And I think, again, it's interesting because we have, if you thought the market was overreacting and you wanted to be a buyer of euros, uh, the risk reward down here is great if you think it's going to pull back into the range. You know, if we're going to pull back into this broader sideways range we've been in since um, September of last year, popped out of it over the last 24 hours. Uh, but let's see, let's see what happens. But I suppose if we saw it bounce and then a higher low is maybe a better trade, maybe a clearer picture next week. But, but lots of markets under some pressure, I think at the moment. Um, and then the cryptos, cryptocurrencies, oh, oil, we've got to look, we haven't looked at oil, have we? I'm looking at just typing in crypto, Bitcoin. I saw Bitcoin was moving today. We do have those couple of trades on on Bitcoin at the moment. 
I mean, I, th I think it's positive. I think we did a, was it last week you did a Bitcoin video? I, I still think, you know, that the, the medium term trend following the breakout in August from this range is still positive. You know, so I'd be looking for a run up back up to these highs on Bitcoin, 52.7. If you can break there back up to 60. Um, you know, I think this was a, a reasonable opportunity to be a buyer over the last week or so. Good support down at 37 and a half. The move today is interesting. Um, but for me, you know, still, I think it's still positive. And the same, I'm guessing, for Ethereum. Let's take a look at Ethereum. There we go. Uh, you know, similar, similar, similar pattern, isn't it, to Ethereum? You know, so big support at 2,400. It's been flipping around 2,800 for the last couple of weeks or so, and, and a bit of a move today. So for me, I'd still be inclined to be a buyer on dips on these markets. Let's take a look at oil. Oil is the market that surprised me. I think I did a couple of shorts on oil. The first shorts I've done for a long time on oil. And I think, I think I've been stopped out of them. Um, or have I actually? Hang on a second. Let's take a look at, let's take a look at it. Where's the trades? Uh, yeah, I think stopped out on oil. But let's, let's take a look at it. I mean, it, it is... I did think, you know, when we saw this sell-off in oil uh, into August, I thought, well, that trend that's been going since April last year is over. Um, rally up. Uh, and I thought we were going to just turn down and go back to 60. But it did. What was the high here? The high in July was $76.38. It touched $76.51. So it broke that by 13 cents uh, the, other, the other week or earlier this week, I should say. So let's see what happens next week. In oil. You know, I can't deny that strength. You know, I've done a couple of shorts, lost money on them. Um, you know, I suppose the trend I'd be following now, if we flip it over to the shorter term charts, let's have a look at it. What's it look like? It looks something like that, doesn't it? So for me, I would go back to being a buyer of dips on oil at the moment, but a bit wrong footed the last couple of weeks. You know, it's, we've got lots of support from $69 through to 73 um, You know, so for me, I'd still be a buyer. I think it, if it can break 77 uh, this is West Texas crude, obviously. If it can break 77 then what are we looking at next? I think we're, we're looking at, actually, is that level 77 I mean, 77 is a big old level going back to here, the 20, October 2018 highs. If it breaks 77 it's at its best levels since... You've got to go back to November 2014. Seven year highs nearly on oil. Incredible. That is not going to help inflation either. If we see oil continue to move higher, clearly, you know, higher fuel prices are going to feed into inflation. So maybe then we do start looking at $100 a barrel next, which seems uh, a, bit, a, bit, a bit crazy. But um, there you go. We'll see. We'll see what happens. So that's, um, that's crude oil. So what I'll do now, I'll have a look at some of the markets you aren't looking at. Before I do that, let's talk through some other cotton. This has been one of my better trades uh, in recent months. It's gone absolutely crazy, cotton. Um, since uh, the middle of September, it was 90 cents, uh, whatever, a ton, probably not a ton, whatever it is, I don't care. It's just a number, isn't it? And it's traded up to uh, 108 and a half today. So the price of cotton has moved 20% in the last uh, couple of weeks or so. And it is just this, this longer term trend. Look at that trend in cotton. Great trend. Uh, so it's been an interesting market. I don't think I've, I've got a, a trade on my own account uh, and I'm sort of trailing a stop behind it, but almost textbook trend in cotton uh, over the last 18 months or so. So it's interesting, I think, up here. Um, you'd have to say, I'd have to say that I think perhaps we'll get something of a correction. Uh, but if it pulls back to the trend line, again, I'd be looking to be a buyer on dips, but cotton at its best levels since. 2011, 10 year highs in cotton. And again, that's another thing. That's not going to help inflation. I wouldn't have thought. You know, if you're a, if you're a clothes manufacturer, um, suddenly your costs are, are jumping up quite a bit. So that's I thought that was that was interesting. And let's look at natural gas. I must admit, I said it'd been a great market for me, natural gas, in recent months. I didn't I didn't catch. I have in this account, but not in my own account. The last move higher. I, I did think that a top was in for natural gas. At about 570, but once again, confounded a lot of us. I think in the last week, trading up to six dollars thirty-three. Uh, great trend in natural gas again. Uh, still, lots of support in gas. 
down at four, which is a long way away, 30% away from where we are now. Um, let's see what happens. I'm no, I know lots of people, you can see it here on the platform, 29% sellers. Lots of people going short, trying to catch the top in this. I think lots of people have had their fingers burnt by natural gas over the last few months. Again, for me, I would not be going short. The only thing I'd be looking to do is buy the dips uh, in natural gas. Um, I'd, I'd rather have a deeper sell off from here, but you know, good support down here at 475 on gas five as a psychological level, quite a volatile couple of days. Let's take a look at it on the intraday chart. Quite a volatile couple of days in the gas price, you can see, you know, swung up to 6.3, down to 5.4, you know, which is a 15% move, then back up again to six, which is a 10% swing, and back down again, 5% today. Crazy, crazy market, but uh, a great trend if you were the right side of it. You know, it worked really well since April of uh, this year and really accelerated away since then. We'll see. We'll see what happens uh, next. Right, we're going to jump into the questions. What's this? Don't, don't spam the chat with rubbish. So um, let me just uh, kick somebody out. Hang on a second. Right. Uh, okay, so go into the questions. So let's have a, let me just jump back onto the S&P. Just have that in the background. I'll have a look at the questions just to see what's going on. Uh, as the as proper trading in the US gets underway. Let's have a quick quick look at that. Pretty volatile, isn't it? This is the hour. So it's uh it's still sort of quite weak today, the S P. Uh let's see what happens. Uh Nike. Let's have a look at Nike, let's have a look at stock. I wonder if Nike are affected by the cost of cotton. I've got no idea what their stuff is made out of, but um so we look at them anyway. So Nike, the uh, they got they got really hit quite hard, didn't they? Down ten percent over the last week or so. Nike, let's take a look at them. Wow! Oh, I remember these. They had that massive jump up, didn't they? Was it on earnings back in June? We were doing the live stream, I think, and they jumped or something. Interesting. Giving back a lot of those gains now, aren't they? Um, I would be. I would still be looking for a buying opportunity. I wouldn't buy it now because we're still making new lows for that sell-off, aren't we? We're crunching through all these old supports. So for me, I'd rather wait to see it make a base, Nike. You know, big support back here at 125. Um, let's see what happens. We're a long way away from there now. Um, you know, but I think, you know, clearly if we're seeing broader market weakness, lots of stuff is going to get hit, you know? Uh, I think Apple were off a bucket load from their, from their highs. Fresh all-time highs again in uh, Apple in September at 156, and they're 140, so they're off 10% from their highs in September. So lots of stocks getting hit, and that Nike one still selling off. Let's see, let's see where it stops. Uh, what else we got? Natural gas. We had a quick look at natural gas. White and investment. Let's take a look at those. Have a look at that as a stock. Is that what's that? Oh, it's UK, isn't it? UK stock. And again, you know, there's the, the famous saying, which I'm sure you're all familiar with, a rising tide lifts all boats. You know, when markets are going up, you know, most stuff should be going up as well. When markets get hit and they've taken a bit of a heavy hit in the last couple of weeks, most stuff's going to get hit as well. Um, for me, you know, white end, white end investment, the trend is still up, isn't it? We've got good support at 2.30. Um, let's see what happens. You know, it, it, it all depends, I think, on the broader market. You know, because it's an it's an investment trust, isn't it? Investing in global markets by the looks of it. If global markets take a hit, their share price isn't going to stay up. Um, but let's see what happens with markets over the next week. But but for me, that trend is still up. Lots of support, 225, 230. Uh, let's see. Let's see what happens. Uh, our Camber Energy, we'll do, we'll do, this is the last stock we'll do for a bit. Then we'll have a look at some other markets. I think this is a hot Reddit stock at the moment, isn't it? Because someone asked me, to have a look at this yesterday. As I often say with these crazy stocks, I've got no interest in them because they're too crazy. But if you're in and you make money, fair enough. But they went from, if you look at the end of August, they were, is that cents, 48 cents, I'm guessing, to uh, the other day, traded as high as $4.80. So uh, what's that? Ten, tenfold move, isn't it? From 48 cents to $4.80. Great little return for the month. Uh, but they've dropped off about 40% in the last couple of days. So for me, these crazy stocks like GameStop and all that lot, 
not one for me. Uh, it's still, still pretty weak today. You know, if you really want to, uh, you know, spin the dice, as it were, and see what happens, you know, it'd be interesting. You know, 250 to three dollars, sort of fairly good support over the last couple of days, but the volatility on these too much off the charts for me. So uh, not one for me, that one. Uh, coffee. Let's have a look at coffee. Um, I did do a trade on coffee. I've had it running for a while in my own account, the coffee trade. And I think, I think yeah, we talk, you know, inflation is a hot topic for markets at the moment. Um, and, um, you know, the, the clearly, you know, oil going up, cotton going up, coffee going up, you know, all this stuff feeds into the everyday cost of living. You know, if, let's look at coffee this year. So coffee started the year around a dollar twenty-five. And here we are at $1.95. So it's, what's that, 50% higher? Not quite 50%. Yeah, 50% higher. So the price of coffee has gone up 50% this year. Um, you know, that is going to have an impact when you're buying your mocha choca shocker at um, Starbucks, isn't it? You'd have thought. And again, all of this feeds through into inflation. So for me, the trend on coffee is still up. You know, it's pretty, pretty overextended from the trend line. I, I bought back, I think back in June, got out after this sell-off. I bought back in again. Think about about here somewhere so i'm in at the moment and slightly up on the trade um it is overextended from that longer term trend which goes back uh just to uh november of last year that longer term trend coming in at 150. so if i didn't have a trade on as usual the 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 question is what do you do do you wait to see if it sells off a bit and get in or do you miss out on it doing a natural gas and blasting higher i don't know but if i was a buyer today the closest i'd want my stop will be the other side of 170. But for me, that trend is still up on coffee, even if it gets knocked back to 150. The trend is still up. So let's see. Let's see what happens with coffee. I know what I forgot to do. I forgot to do the, uh, the contact details. Um, don't forget, I'm doing this today with Capital.com. So go to Capital.com to open an account, uh, download the platform, um, open a demo account, open a real account, the usual stuff. Any questions after this, drop me an email. David.jones at capital.com, general trading questions. Uh, follow me on Twitter, at Jones the Markets, and follow capital.com on YouTube, Twitter, and Facebook. And we have launched a stock channel in recent months. Um, the so we do look at stocks every week on the YouTube channel. Uh, we did NEO today, which is uh, the Chinese electric car company. The description for the stocks channel is in the description of this live stream. So if you go to that, you can link to the stocks channel. Okay, so that's um, that's that done. Right, uh, where are we? Uh, let me just jump back to where I was. CrowdStrike. We looked at that, didn't we? U.S. security company. Uh, web security, wasn't it? Bang on that trend. Look at that. Bang on the trend, CrowdStrike. Great trend, that one. So for me, the trend is still up, isn't it? So the trend is still up. Good support at, ahead of $220. Trendline support coming in at 230. Again, I think so much stuff is market dependent at the moment in the broader market. But for me, the trend on CrowdStrike is still definitely up. If you only have a small trading account under $500, what market should you trade? Good question. I think one of the, the good things with us, with Capital.com, you can trade really tiny, right? So, so if you have a small trading, well, actually, if you have any size of trading account, What's really important is risk management, right? And it is the thing that most people ignore and most people lose money, okay? So risk management, very important. Um, so for me, one of the good things with us, you can trade really small. So let's take the Dow Jones, for example. So my account here, okay, there's 16,000 in this account, but let's say I only had a $500 trading account and I wanted to practice sensible risk management and only risk a small amount in every trade. So let's say I want to trade the Dow but I only want to risk losing uh, 10 pounds on my trade, which would be 2% of my account. So let's say I want to trade the Dow. So the low for the Dow today is at 33,500. So I want to do a trade. I'm going to be a buyer for the Dow. And I'm going to put my stop loss. So 33,500 was the low. I'll go 33,450 for a stop, uh, but I only want to risk a tenner or something small. Let's say I only want to risk 35 quid. Let's do it that way. Can I trade even fractional again? Hang on. Let me see. Maybe the, the Dow wasn't the best example. Oh, yeah, there we go. So I can go 0 0.0. I can trade 0 0.03 of a contract on the Dow, 
with a stop at 33,450, buying it at 33,964. So I've got a 500 point stop and my loss is only, my risk is only 11 pounds. So I can trade that, there we go, just did it. I bought it at 33,966. So I think if you've got a smaller account, it's not so much what markets you should trade, it's whether you can trade the market, whatever market you wanna trade, at the right level of risk, yeah? Where you're not risking too much. Because if you've got a 500 quid account, and you're risking losing 100 quid on a trade, I can virtually guarantee you, you won't be trading for very long because you'll blow your account up. So for me, it's more important, can you trade the size you want? Uh, that, that's it, you know, it's, it's about risk management, not about markets to trade. But good question. That, uh, uh, da, 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 we did looked at gold. Enjoy the streams. One question about the platform. What happened to the insight section? It's still there, I think, isn't it? Isn't it? And maybe it's not still there. I'm not sure. Uh, don't know. You've caught me on that one. I'll find out. I'll find out for next week and see, see what's going on. Um, let's have a quick look. Oil, did oil, did natural gas. Are all markets expected to drop again because of the uncertainty with the U.S. debt ceiling? I think it, it could be volatile. You know, there's this, the headline, isn't it? The U.S. is going to run out of money. The U.S. government is going to run out of money in the next couple of weeks or something. We have been here quite a few times before for markets. But again, it's something that is clearly not helping sentiment at the moment. You know, and it does introduce, you know, again, a level of volatility and uncertainty for markets at the moment. Let's take a look at the Hong Kong index, the China A50. Let's do the China A50. I think that could be the more interesting one out of the two. Let's take a look at that, China A50. I remember we looked at that a while ago and did a, I think we did a buy on it, didn't we? I don't know what's been happening with all this Evergrande stuff there. I'm guessing it might have been, it's been knocked back a bit, but not much. You know, I think we were looking at it back here, the China A50, and it's still holding above 14 and a half thousand, isn't it? So you could take the view if you wanted to, that perhaps 14,500 is something of a base for the China A50, and it is trying to build a base down here. Again, a lot depends on what happens with other markets, and I think it is always difficult like this, where maybe you know, market sentiment is changing over the last couple of weeks. Where does it go next? But for the China A50, 14,500 is proving to be something of a, a, line, a line in the sand. Um... What do you think about the dollar against the Hungarian foreign? So let's just take a look at that. I mean, we have seen dollar strength over the last week. Let's take a look at that and see what it looks like. So there's a daily chart. It's, I mean, it's strong, isn't it? It is, I mean, clearly we've had this great run. But if we take this chart out, um, I think it's another one that is interesting to coin a phrase because you could argue that the broader trend for the last year it might look something like that, I suppose. And it's broken out of it. I think it's a difficult one because we are back up to these old highs, dollar against the Hungarian forint, around about 310. So I think there are two ways of trading this. If you thought the dollar had run too far against the Hungarian forint, you have got a great short opportunity. You go short now at 308. Put it, and for me, put a stop loss somewhere above that high. So that high is 312, maybe 315. So you've got seven points risk, seven big points risk. And if it does pull all the way back to the recent lows, you've got you know, perhaps 16 points plus upside on the trade. So that is one strategy because we've seen it run out of steam up here in March of this year. For me, if it breaks out through that high, we've got maybe a breakout trade on. So let's see what happens and maybe it runs away from here. So I think it's all to do with how does it perform next week around that high. But at the moment, it's running out of steam where it ran out of steam before. So let's see, let's see what happens. So much is difficult, I think, at the moment. Um, when should you start trading the S&P 500? I think, for me, I mean, clearly it's a 24-hour market. For me, I only tend to focus on it during normal market hours, which for me is um, 2.30 in the afternoon UK time. So 9.30 New York time to... Uh, when is it? Four o'clock New York time, isn't it? That's when it? That's when it trades normal hours. So I only tend to look at it during normal market, or trade it during normal market hours. What's the view on Apple? Let's take a look at Apple, because we had a quick look at it to see how it had come off. I think there is actually a trade on Apple. Been trade, or maybe I've come out of it. I must have come out of it. 
I think, if we take it, take it right back, the chart in Apple. Here we go. So if we went back to that, the April lows or the March lows last year in Apple. Look, something like that. You could say, and I would say, it is bang on that trend line, Apple. So for me, I would still be a buyer of dips. Again, I wouldn't be a buyer perhaps today uh, in Apple, but if we saw a bit of strength next week, I think it's an interesting one, looking to see if it can run back to the all-time highs. But, but as usual, the disclaimer of the day, I think it all does depend uh, on what's going on in, in the wider market context, you know, with some of the weakness that we're seeing at the moment. So um, let's see, let's see what happens. But for me, that trend is still up. So let's see if it can uh, snap its way, uh, snap its way back up on Apple. What's your view on AMC? I, I mean, again, my view is it's a crazy stock, but I haven't looked at it for a week. So let's take a look. Have a look at AMC. I've got no idea what it's done recently. I, I mean, I do think you know the, the story is over. For the game stops and the AMC, we, we've seen the move, and oh, I'm surprised it's come all the way back, isn't it? Uh, I'm looking at the wrong thing. If I was looking at the right market, it might help. It's Friday afternoon. It's been a long week. AMC. Uh, again, the game, the, the story is over. You know, I think, I think it's gone. You know, the excitement's gone. So, so for me, you know, it's a crazy stock. Traded up to 70, whatever it was, 75, and here we are, we've halved. Uh, I suppose if you wanted to do anything, it could be a buyer with a stop loss the other side of 28. But I do think the, the game's moved on. I'm not quite sure to what, but um, yeah, I, I mean, I, I've got no interest in these stocks. Like, like I always say, if you're in them and you make money, good luck. That's the name of the game. But, but the same with GameStop as well. You know, I think uh, the, the drama has, has been, on, been and gone on those stocks. Uh, we looked at Euro, uh, US dollar. Hold on a second. Uh, Pfizer. Let's have a look at Pfizer. Traditional drug company stock. It's a bit weak, isn't it, really? It's, I, don't try, I mean, I think I would, I would treat that weakness as a buying opportunity. I just wouldn't be a buyer today, I think, in Pfizer. Um, if I looked at... If you pick up on a trend line, it's all about where does it stop, you know, because we'd seen, you know, a, a good base for Pfizer from May through to July ahead of $38. It's trading at 42 at the moment. So I think it's an interesting one, definitely an interesting one to watch going into next week, Pfizer. And I'd be thinking about buying, but I wouldn't be in a hurry to buy just yet. That I mean, that sell-off has been pretty brutal, hasn't it, from that 52 high in August to 42 today, so it's down 20% nearly uh, over the last six weeks. So it's interesting, but I'll be waiting to see, waiting for a bit of strength to come in and see see what happens. Um, dollar index, yeah, we didn't look at the dollar index. I did buy the dollar index this week, actually, for myself, for my own. I think we've got a trade, we've got a trade in here on the dollar index. I can't remember when that's from, but we've got a trade in here for the dollar index. It did very briefly poke out to new highs for the year, the dollar index. So it's traded as high as 94.50, which is the best levels since September last year. So we have seen 12 month highs on the dollar index this week, um, but perhaps it's a bit overstretched in the short to medium term. Perhaps we have maybe a bit of a correction from here. Who knows, let's see what happens. Um, but I would definitely personally be looking to be a buyer on dips, the dollar index. And of course, if stock markets sell off, and the world gets a lot more worried about everything, you'd expect the dollar to start doing better again, like it did last year. I mean, last year was extreme, of course, in March last year because of the coronavirus, but the dollar was seen very much as a, as a safe haven uh, back then. Uh, so that's, that's the dollar index, so an interesting one, interesting one to watch. We looked at dollar Hungarian forint. Um, please take a look at DraftKings. Let's have a look at DraftKings. How are we doing for time? What time is it? 10 past. DraftKings. Is that, um, is that a recent flotation or am I getting it confused? No, that's not recent flotation, is it? I mean, for me, I think I think that could be a buy. You know, I think if 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 there was a trade, it's a, it's a bit sideways and boring overall this year. I mean, we did, you know, we saw a good run into March, it's been, you know, a bit rangy since then. But for me, 
maybe it, an aggressive buy today for me would be a buyer at 49.50 with a stop the other side of 46. Perhaps a looser stop is down here at 40. So um, let's see, let's see what happens. But maybe that's another one for next week if we see a bit of strength, a bit of strength coming in. What is a good, what's a good time to enter the stock market or should we wait for a start? Well, you know, you've got to say, if you've put money in the stock market at any point over the last 100 years and you were still in at the beginning of September, you were still up, you know, so I think it depends on your time frame, doesn't it? You know, if you're investing for the next 10, 15, 20 years, should you be too worried about a bit of short term volatility? You know, history would say, no, you wouldn't. I think it but it depends on your time frame. If you're investing, if you're taking a position for the next day, would you buy the S&P today? I don't know. If you're taking a longer term position, it's more about what's the famous phrase? It's more about time in the market than market timing. Yeah. So it's about having your money work for you. So I think it just depends on your on your time horizon. And I think that's probably only one one that only you you can answer there. Uh, Netflix, let's have a look at Netflix, actually, because I think, again, I think if, if inflation starts to be a problem, then clearly one knock on effect, effect from inflation is cost of living goes up. And I wonder if people do start to cut back on discretionary spending, stuff that they can do without. But um, saying all that, the Netflix chart is really strong. We had it been a bit boring since July last year, Netflix, uh, you know, sort of stuck in a bit of a sideways range. But are we seeing it finally break out in uh, over the last month? It's interesting, the moves in Netflix, given everything else is looking a little bit precarious. You know, yesterday, Netflix hit fresh all time high. So I would have to be, as a trend follower, a buy the, buyer of the dip on Netflix. I'd probably wait for this dip today to finish and see where it is next week. But it's quite interesting that it's broken out, although saying that it did break out here in January and it ended up being a false break. I think that's a really interesting stock to watch. Let's come back to it next week, Netflix. Um, but I'd be quite interested to be a buyer on a dip here for Netflix. Uh, let's see, let's see what happens. Let's have a look at the questions. Uh, Visa, let's have a look at Visa. So Visa is, did we buy those? Did we do a trade in those on a live stream? Yeah, we bought them, bought them in the week, 3rd of September, bought them at 2.24.57. Um, I think that's a buy. To me, that's that's the sort of setup I look for. Clearly nothing today is financial advice. If you buy it at halves today, don't blame me. But I think it's interesting that it's um, great trend since the March lows of 2020. Sells off, comes back to big support, 2.15 has a move off it, sells off, and today we're seeing a bit of a recovery. So I think that's an interesting. So for me, that could be a trade, buying at 225 with a stop loss the other side of 215. So I think that's an interesting market. If it breaks 215, I think it looks like this uptrend is well and truly over, and perhaps we're starting a new downtrend. But let's see, I've seen Moderna Matt mentioned a couple of times, the old uh, vaccine manufacturer. Down a lot today, Moderna. Don't know why, but Let's have a look. That is down a lot, isn't it? That is um, quite concerning, really. I suppose you could say that's a double top, isn't it? If you're a pattern follower, you'd say it's a double top. It touched, what did it touch? Touched nearly $500, 497 in August, and we're 331 today. It's a big move, Moderna. It'd be interesting to see what happens pretty much here. If it's going to bounce anywhere, about 320 could be the level to watch this afternoon. If it starts breaking below there, you'd expect quite a bit more selling. So, um, an interesting one. I don't know what the news is, uh, why Moderna's down uh, more than... Do you believe AMC can get to 10K? I hope that's a joke. That's got to be a joke question, surely. Um, uh, da -da -da. Natural gas, we looked, we looked at natural gas. VIX, let's have a look at the VIX. So the VIX is the volatility index. Someone asked last week about trading the VIX and I say I never personally... I never try to trade the VIX because I don't think you can make any sense of it. But it's often referred to as the fear index for markets. Not surprising given what we've seen going on in the stock market over the last few days. You know, we are seeing the VIX up, you know, up to 21 and a half uh, on the VIX. Let's see what happens. I mean, you know, historically these spikes don't last very long until, as I said last week, they do. Like in March 
2020 when it went nuts the vix obviously but um you know clearly perking up a bit but it's not not a market that i would trade personally palantir i think we looked at ethereum when we so i've seen ethereum come in a couple of times we did look at ethereum when we looked at cryptocurrencies and i think it's bullish is it palantir technologies that's it isn't it big data analytics i think we did this i've done this on the stock channel stocks channel a few times and i think it, it feels feels like it's a little bit boring but i definitely would probably definitely probably definitely probably would have been wrong footed by that breakout there i would i would be tempted to be a buyer of the dip on palantir but i wouldn't buy it today because it's still weak so i think it's one to watch for next week you know we've got you know good support from july ahead of 20 dollars. it's 23.80 at the moment I'd be tempted to be a buyer on a bit of strength next week, but it's still weak today. So I wouldn't do anything uh, at the moment on that one. Da -da 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 we looked at Moderna. Uh, yeah, Evergrande, I did do. There's a, there's a video on the channel from earlier this week just explaining some of the in, ins and outs of Evergrande and why it's um, spooking markets. Copper. We haven't done copper, have we? Didn't look at copper today. I've still got a trade on copper. I wonder. Has it been a bit of a boring week for copper? Oh, it's been. It's been. It is a bit of a boring week. There's this trend in copper that's been going for a long time. Well, March last year, and I just wonder, is it falling out of the trend or is it still trying to hold the trend? And for now, I think, like I said last week, as long as it holds above 3.95 to four, I am still positive on copper. But it has been a dull few months. You know, we're just flip-flopping around. So I've still got the trade on. I've got to stop the other side of that low. So um, it's still just flip-flopping around. So uh, let's see. Let's see what happens. Chip is it Chipotle? Chipotle? I never know how to um, pronounce that one. The uh, food, isn't it? Is it like um, Chipotle? Yeah, Mexican grill. Fast food. Um, let's have a look. I mean, that, that great run up, again, it's a bit, that, that, that move in Nike, Nike that we had, that it spiked up, you know, and it was still strong and it's selling off. And I mean, again, I would have to be a buyer because the trend is still up, but I wouldn't want to be a buyer today, you know, because it's still weak. So for me, if we sold off a lot deeper from here, you know, I'd be watching these old highs around $1,600, that sort of level. But, um, you know, for me, I would want to be a buyer, but not when it's weak. Uh, when it's weak like this, so we'll see. We'll see what happens. Um, Caterpillar, yeah. yeah look, traded that in the past. Let's have a look. It's pretty weak, isn't it? Been pretty. It's been pretty weak since June, isn't it? There's a longer term big trend up. See the big trend. It's interesting, Caterpillar, because I do wonder, you know, if it has reversed. If we plonked our trend line on like that. I mean, I, I think, I suppose an aggressive trade here would be to give it one last chance to recover. So, you know, so these old lows around 180, maybe that's the trade we'll do. But, but that correction off the sort of the June highs is still going. But will we see some buyers come back in, you know, in this sort of zone where we had it last time? Perhaps that's the trade we'll do today. So we'll, we'll assume the stock market is not going to crash. We we'll put a stop in at 175. Uh, we normally risk 100 quid on these trades, don't we? If we buy, so we're going to buy eight at 192.84. Uh, stop at, as I say, 175, and see if we can get a bit of a recovery over the next couple of weeks for a risk of 105. Let's, let's do that. There we go. So we bought Caterpillar. It's not the, not the greatest trade out there. Netflix is the better trade, probably. But I think it's interesting. It has fallen out of that trend. Are we going to see something of a base forming here and, uh, and a recovery? Let's see. Let's see what happens. Uh, and I think that's it. We're going to wrap things up there. I think the time is almost up for me. So I'm going to wrap things up there and leave things there. But um, to find out more, go to capital.com. Uh, you can get access to all the markets, all the charts today. Open a demo account. Open a real account. All that stuff. Um, any questions, drop me an email, david.jones at capital.com, at Jones the Markets on Twitter, and follow capital.com on YouTube, Twitter, and Facebook. A lot of uncertainty at the moment, I think, is the best way of describing it. A lot of uncertainty, particularly just to do with stock markets, really, because we have had, you know, that sell off, a bigger sell off 
than we have seen for some time uh, in the S&P 500 and in the NASDAQ, not so much in the NASDAQ. But um, that is, that for me, that's the market to watch next week and today to see what happens. You know, if we start pushing below these, um, these July lows, you know, it looks like the market is turning. So um, lots of things it could affect. But we'll wrap things up there. There's the contact details. Um, any questions, drop me an email and we'll do it all again next week. Thanks for coming along.